Okay, what you're looking at here is the 2018 FXHO Cruiser. And I've been working on this Wave Runner for about uh, two months now. And very excited to be putting in the water finally. I just wanted to show you all what has been done on the Wave Runner before I drop it in the water. This is by far the, uh, the most advanced one that I've set up yet. And it has a lot of features that the other Wave Runners do not have. The VX, I have a video on that. I'm also I have a video on the FX setup. We've gone above and beyond and done a lot of things that we haven't done on the others. The uh, arches that are that are put on here, these are by Fishmaster, and we've mounted them through bolted on the side here, so that you can put a, a washers or plates on the back. It's by far a more secure way of doing it rather than uh, bolting through the fiberglass and just using 5200 to secure it. And you can put uh, the rod holders on wherever you like. It's kind of a nice feature. Um, even if you did not go through Fishmaster for the arches, you can still have someone fabricate. If you go to a T-top shop or an aluminum shop that does welding. One of the big modifications that was made on this Wave Runner is the access to the fuel tank. Normally the fuel tank fill is right here, but when you're offshore fishing with these Wave Runners, you don't want to have to pull this top up. And so uh, I've put another fill port, tied it into the main fill line, and it allows me to uh, fill without lifting the top up. Uh, up top here, we've put the HDS-7. It's a much bigger screen than the HDS-5. It's still an inter integrated uh, antenna in there, so you don't have to have anything external. And a uh, nice big screen, nice features. This Wave Runner is set up with spotlights in the front here, really light, light up at night, and navigation lights your front navigation and also rear navigation in um, anchor light in the back. It has a nice holder here for a uh, VHF radio. Sometimes you don't want to have to open up your, leave your, your little drawer open here with your VHF and you can just set it here and listen to whatever you need to listen to. This uh, Wave Runner also is set up with a nice compass or a Ritchie compass in case GPS went out we'd still be able to navigate back. Uh, this is lighted so when uh, these spotlights are on this will also light up. I'll give you a peek at the the way the electric is set up here. We have a bilge pump rigged to this switch here in uh, inside the rear. It's a backup bilge. The, the Wave Runner already has one that uh, is built in, but we've added an additional uh, bilge pump so we can check it to see if there's ever water coming in. Uh, we want to detect that early. Uh, we have spotlights and we have navigation lights. We have a battery tester. So um, my batteries, I have dual batteries set up on this Wave Runner and they're set to a one, two switch and whichever one is be in use, you can just press this button and get an idea as to how much uh, juice you have in your battery, make sure that it's charging properly. I've also uh, put a cigarette lighter in here for charging cell phones or a spotlight, whatever you, you prefer. And this little uh, gadget here is for the mic uh, power pole micro that controls the up down function of the, the power pole uh, on this wave runner which I've, uh, is the first time I've set one up, and uh, it's gonna be a really nice addition to this, this Wave Runner. If we take a look under the front compartment. There you go. Some of the electric, it's real easy to access the, the fuses uh, by putting the wiring up here. All of the uh, negatives are routed to here, all the positive lines are routed to here, and I have one line here that goes to the one, two switch uh, in, the, in the rear. And then all of the systems, whether it be the cigarette lighter, the GPS, 
the bilge pump, uh, the, the running lights or the navigation uh, lights. Um, they're all uh, set up on a fuse individually. And these are nice, these fuses, they light up if fuse die, uh, dies or breaks or blows. You, so you can just get a quick glance as to what's going on with the, um, the fuses and your systems. But each one has its own. And I'll show you how those wires are set up in the rear of the Wave Runner. Just to give you an idea of what, uh, what's going on with the wiring for the Wave Runner, there's two batteries that were set up in the rear of the Wave Runner. And you can see them down there. There's one and there's another right behind it there. Here's the one, two switch. Go to battery number two batter or battery number one, or you can keep it in the off position, which is down, or you can go to both batteries, which is the up position. Uh, all of those wires from the main switch right here uh, go to the power pole or the, the switch panel in the front and the starter. That's your, you have three bolts in the back of this and the main bolt goes to all of those. Your side bolts are just connected to battery number one or battery number two. It's a real easy setup. Don't be intimidated by setting up one of those one, two switches. And I've even put the power pole um, fuse right right back here also. And they're all nicely routed. All the wiring is nicely routed right to the, the front of the Wave Runner. Dual batteries and the dual bilge pumps. This is the original bilge pump. And this is the additional bilge pump that's routed up here straight to a port or right off to the side. You don't want too much slack in this line, otherwise water will build up and you won't be able to empty the hole effectively. And here's where I've mounted the outlet port for the bilge. These spotlights are, are uh, super strong and I'll show you a clip of how bright they are at, at night. This is what the navigation lights look like. And there's the rear navigation light. And this is what the spotlight looks like. Pretty powerful really light things up. These arches are also by Fishmaster and you pretty much you order them and put them put them on exactly how you would like to have them set up. You can vary the degree of angle uh, so these this can be lower or higher and uh, also with the front you can adjust the angle uh, so this can be higher or lower. I recommend you keep this bar as low as possible as you can see i've got it almost hugging the the dashboard the reason is that you don't want that uh right in your face when you're running you want to be able to see where you're going and uh, navigate without interference from your gps or anything i still have a good view of the speedometer and my gauges down there but uh, it's for the most part out of the way and i kept it as low as possible yet still loud for the front uh, hood to be moved up and down. The rear of the the Wave Runner, this arch, I've made a, a custom leaning post here for uh, standing up, leaning against while you're fishing, or the rear uh, passenger has a uh, backrest to lean on here. But it also functions as a holder for your tackle. It's a tackle center. So you can fit three Plano boxes in here and have all of your gear uh, right at your fingertips while you're fishing. You don't have to fuss through everything, anything just to change your lure out. The rear uh, navigation light, and these are all LEDs, so they burn very little energy, take very little power to, to keep them running. Uh, you can see in the, the back here, the rod holders are angled out for trolling and same with the front they're angled out for trolling uh, you can troll two rods from the front or two rods from the back and they out they act sort of as outriggers uh, for for your fishing poles okay moving to the back of the wave runner uh, this rack was fabricated uh, for me and i'll provide you the information to the 
the gentleman that does that work. Uh, really nice rack. Uh, you can find any rack online for uh, around the $300 range, decent ones. This one you pay a couple hundred dollars more, but well worth it. It's all aluminum, uh, solid aluminum base here. And uh, he'll even customize it to ho however you like in terms of, I had a plate right here in case I wanna through bolt it to secure it permanently. Um, his system of hooking this up to the wave runner makes it removable. It doesn't put any holes in your wave runner. It secures on the bottom here and also secures in the, in the front with the turnbuckle and it's very secure. That thing, you, you can't budge it. Um, he does really nice work. As you can see, all of the, the aluminum is, is uh, nicely um, designed and uh, effectively placed. He's uh, set it up so I can mount these fuel packs on the sides of the rack. And the way that these work is you just unscrew them here, loosen this one up, loosen this up, and your fuel pack, your pack can come off. And when you're done, push it back on, secure it like that, and tighten it down. And that was with one hand. I've taken the original fill port off and added a flexible port, and I have a whole separate video um, that you can see how to add the fast pour spout and the, uh, the air vent to the back of these as well. We found this Coleman, it really works nice. It's a tight fit. It's an inexpensive cooler. Uh, but it should uh, be very effective in terms of giving us plenty of room. As you can see, I mean, it's just a, it's a 70 quart cooler. It's very large. You can put snorkeling gear in there or fish in there, whatever. Have a look here at the power pole micro set up right here. Pole doesn't stick up too high and uh, it holds pretty firmly in place there. Uh, when you pull up on it, you can't pull it out once it's in so you don't have to worry about losing it. That's small enough that you can fit on a kayak or a wave runner. And I've got that hooked to the main power on the one, two switch, and it just connects like that. And your pole goes right in here and you press a button up on the front or in the back here. I've got that, uh, that little button thing that I showed you in, inside the, uh, the front compartment that controls this here and uh, once your pole is in here you press a button it goes all the way down anchors you or push another button it comes all the way up and uh, I've never seen one on a wave runner before I wanted to try it out and it's going to be a really nice addition uh, not have to worry about anchoring in the in the shallows see how the rod holders are up here I've got four mounted in the back and then the two that go off to the sides just want to give you a good view of that whole thing like that. Transducer on this wave runner is rigged up through a um, external bracket here. So there was no drilling needed. We just took these bolts out, put a bracket in here, put a spacer over here, and uh, allows you to mount uh, your transducer uh, right in the back here. It, you get a much better picture. Picks up more while you're running. You can see more of the depth uh, while you're going fast at speed if it's external versus an internal transducer. And Lauren Potrowski was the uh, gentleman from Ohio that uh, provided this for me. You can see uh, all his direct contact information. Um, the uh, jet area, I took the, the rubber housing out here just so I can flush it better when, uh, when I come in from offshore. The salt water can really do a lot of damage, so it's good to get some fresh water in there, and that's one way of, of uh, doing that. You can see how all the wires are routed for that transducer down here. It goes up into here. The wiring goes up through that spout that normally shoots water over here. So the wiring comes across here with some tie wraps and then right up into there. And then from there, it goes right into the wave runner through the back area here. Right in here. We did purchase a nice grill and that can mount right in your side holder here. We're getting ready to head to the sandbar now and give it a try. But uh, it's gonna be a nice addition to have out uh, there. That fits in your, your cooler in the back 
and you just take it out. Marcia will show you how it secures. So that just uh, locks in with that system there. So that just slides right in there, and then you can turn that knob and it locks it in place. And you bring your fuel canister out there, and you got a nice grill. Between that, your nice cup holders here. You bring some hamburgers and whatever you need, and uh, have a nice day out on the sandbar. Wave runners, if you're going to be uh, rigging them up like this, I really, I've said this before and I'll say it again, uh, wave, uh, Yamaha is the way to go. Uh, they're extremely stable uh, when you're fishing and you're standing up in the rear of the wave runner with all of your uh, gear in the back here. And they're extremely uh, reliable. Uh, they very easy to maintain. Um, as you can see, the engine compartment here, everything is very accessible and plenty of room in the sides to get in and change your uh, your oil filters or um, access anything in, in the wave runners. You don't see that with other uh, skis on the market. Uh, so I highly recommend if you're going to do a setup like this for fishing, stick with the, the Yamaha brand. I will link the full build videos to this video, and uh, so subscribe, and you'll be able to see in detail what how each uh, process was, was done. I hope this video gives you some ideas as to what you can do with uh, Yamaha Wave Runner, and hopefully you can uh, make the most of yours. And uh, if not, just enjoy the video.